it's Steve here again at Vince to Key Studio. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the Hammond C3 organ, which is a tone wheel organ originally made by the Hammond Company from 1954 until 1975 ish. The original Hammond organs were first manufactured from 1935 but then they went through various different changes and because they had trouble with crosstalk between the notes. So basically inside you've got a tone wheel configuration. The C3 had 91 or 96 tone wheels in it depending on where you read and what that means is it had 90 odd tones being generated all at the same time. The C3 had 96 tone wheels inside only 91 of them were used for creating tones and the other five were used there to just keep everything working in balance and, and everything. The tone wheels themselves are basically small discs that had like furrowed edges and they spin round next to an electromagnetic pickup. All of the time there are always all of these different tones all playing or emitting, not playing, but they're emitting the sound from the tone wheel organ and then by way of pressing a key it actually opens a switch and lets one of those tone wheel sounds or several of them all filter through. Let me just go through the whole system. <coughs> So this organ has got two manuals here, so it's got the swell keyboard and the great keyboard, as you'd have on a normal sort of church organ. It's got selections of presets here. I always used to think before I ever had one of these that these actually played notes, but they don't. They're just they're like pretend keys to, to, to set different presets. So if I just skim through it quickly, uh, so that one you've got um, nothing. preset ones. That doesn't work. Um, now when you get up to the last two, these correspond to this set of drawbars. So this one here is this set of drawbars and this one here is this set of drawbars. Now this one here, the, these drawbars are basically for the, 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 the sort of unpercussified sound. So if I just start it from the very basic. You know, so you've got that tone there. If I just hold one note down, you'll be able to hear that these these go up and there's sort of some of them are in fifths, some of them are in like thirds, and they're, they're different overtones, which obviously give the the organ its its um, timbre. So you've got um, if I hold that note down there, that's a fifth above that one, and that was an octave to that one, and then an octave above that. And another a fifth above that one, another octave, and then a third above the previous one, and then a, that's where because it's quite a high note it it, it um, starts to replicate and, and, and sort of goes back down again. So if I'd have held a, a different note down, you would have had that note, which is like the third note, the third interval. That was like another third above it, which is a fifth from the original note, which is, I'll play again. Is there? And then another one, which is a, a couple of octaves above it. So all those those together, if you just they're basically just sort of like um, glorified sine waves. All of these when they come out. But if you add them together. there showing you the, the first set of draw bars. This key here uh, is linked to these draw bars, the second set. Let's just cut them off. These ones here. Let's this up. These ones here are linked to this key and again if I just sort of play you through it's exactly the same configuration. But with these draw bars on the on the upper keyboard on the, sw the swell keyboard you have a percussion setting as well. 
So if you push the percussion on, that will give you like a very, very sharp attack. That will give you a different um, frequency of percussion sound. So the idea is that when you then add that, that, that fast decaying sound uh, to the, the normal drawbar sound, you've got that kind of and you've got a slow decay on the percussion and fast decay so if I put it on fast decay and then so that's basically just those sounds there. So we have the, the percussion on, off, and you know, soft or loud or normal, uh, fast decay, slow decay, and then the percussion harmonic selector. So you've got a choice of a, um, a, a well, if you play a C note and it's down on the second um, one here, that plays a, a C, a, a, an octave or so above the note you're playing. Um, so that's the note I'm playing, the C. Oh, and this plays a note, an octave, uh, two octaves up. Um, and that one plays a G. But then added together with all the other frequencies, you get a rather nice, sort of expressive sound with a bit of a bit of a tack to it. So it's. And then if I go back to the normal organ, you can hear that it's a bit of some of the... That one's kind of... hasn't got the attack. It still still sort of sounds fairly similar. Obviously you need to get the uh, draw bars in the same, same setup. So that's the first two draw bars. So the first two draw bars are for the top keyboard, the swell, and the great keyboard is the bottom one, which isn't quite so great because it's it's still got... Still got two sets of draw bars for each. Each note selector over here, these, these black and white reverse notes. But the percussion doesn't make any effect there. So the percussion circuit only works on the top one. So that's the idea, because obviously you're more likely to be playing some sort of solo-y thing up there with the percussion on. And you'll be playing chords on the bottom one, usually with the with like kind of a um, playing a bit of a twiddle on the top with some chords underneath. And you'd probably be doing that in an organ showroom. I should say that there's also settings for pedals here. In fact, I think that might be just a cancel key, that thing one. So for these two keys on this great keyboard, it's basically just allowing you to preset your own sound on on one of them. So you might have like an overall organ sound with all of the draw bars on. And then now it's switched over to this one here, which is a sort of a more trebly sound. The other thing you have as a sort of an added effect built into the organ is the vibrato circuit. So over here, this is nothing to do with the vibrato, that's just an overall um, volume in, in, sort of immediate reduction in level but you've got vibrato for the swell keyboard the top one and vibrato for the lower one for the great and then for all of those for, for each of those switches if you move this knob around here it's got um, I think it's, is it eight eight different select uh, selections So you can have 
different sorts of vibrato on those. On this organ, this one's actually had a few modifications, but then they've been removed. So originally these wouldn't have been here, and I don't think these would have been here either. This was originally connected to a, um, a special circuit that gave you an added bass pedal sound on top of the original bass pedals. On, on, on this organ that's got, obviously you can see down here, there's a two octaves of bass pedals, and you've got two draw bars up here, one is for the, I think it's the 16 foot. It's rattly there. And that's the, well actually no, I think that might be 32 foot and that might be 16. It's either that or 16 and eight, but anyway. That's all you've got on this, this organ. So these, these switches here would have given you a softer uh, organ sound or a sustained organ sound, which you don't get on this as, as in the general sort of default settings of the organ. So ignore that, because that's that doesn't work at the moment. You might be one day, I might put, plug it all back in again. And now here we've got, these are actually Leslie selectors. Now at the moment this organ's running through a Leslie 760 speaker. Originally this would have been put through a, a, a Hammond PR40 speaker as well. And I think that is what these, these selectors here, they're not actually plugged into anything, but I'm pretty sure that those three selectors there would route the sound to the PR40 organ. This lower switch here is wired up to the Leslie cabinet. So in the central position, it just means that the, the, the Leslie speaker that usually whizzes around is stationary. If I play a note, and then if I take the vibrato off, I play a note, I'll play a note and then I'll push the levy so it starts off slowly. So you, can, you can hear that note is now sort of whirring around. And then you've got either slow or fast. So that's the slow, and if I put it up to the fast setting. first get one of these you will notice that although there's not just like a simple on off switch there's two switches one says start and one says run and the idea with that is because the tone wheel generator is actually an electromechanical device and it needs a motor to spin it round so what you have to do is you initially have to start the motor running and you have to hold it down for a few seconds to get it spinning at a, a constant speed so here we go And then you flick this switch up, and this one engages the motor and keeps, and I think it adds another um, a capacitor onto it just to keep it steady. And it also starts the amplifier warming up because it's a valve amplifier. So it takes a little bit of a like, sort of 20, 30 seconds to warm up. And because it was already playing just now, it's, it's pretty much straight, it's, it's on straight away. I would show you the back of this, but I can't be bothered. But if I reach a thousand subscribers by the end of tonight, I'll show you the back. I should also say that the later Hammond organs, the M series, aren't anywhere near as big as this. They haven't got such large keyboards. So you get like an extra bass sound on these. So the, I think that F there is the lowest note on a, like a Hammond M1 or M M3 or M100. But then on this organ, you you get it all down there as well and then similarly with this as well you've also got a swell pedal which just sort of just 
like an expression pedal. Not so much a volume pedal, because it's the volume's more like loud, soft, loud, soft, but it's, it's like a kind of a... So it's a uh, expression pedal and it just sort of gives a bit of um, light and shade to it. So it's not so harsh as a volume pedal. And it's done by a large variable capacitor inside with interlocking sort of metal wings and it, and it kind of goes not that. That's how it works. This particular C3 organ was donated to us by Don Shin who is an organist of, of, of great renown, and he was the inspiration behind Keith Emerson for Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Don used to play in a band in the 1960s at, at places like the Marquee Club in, in London. Don was the organist in the band The Soul Agents, which coincidentally included my dad as well, who is a, a guitarist, Tony Good. He played on the Petula Clark's Downtown. He played the guitar. And The Soul Agents were a band that, that they backed various people probably most notably Rod Stewart it was his first sort of proper backing group but uh, Don used to play a, I think it was an L100 he used to play and they used to take it around in their their van and because it's all got valves in the back it, they'd be driving around all over the country and they'd get out and set up and he'd be playing and all of a sudden the, the organ would stop working because a valve would come out or it's come loose so what he used to do is he used to shake the organ or he'd go round the back with a screwdriver and start sticking a screwdriver into it. And Keith Emerson, watching this at the side of the stage, thought, oh my God, this is great, I'm going to do this. And he thought that it was Don's stage act, but all it was was that Don was just trying to get the organ to work. Here's a little film of him having a go the other day. He even took his coat off for this, so watch it with admiration. Thank you very much, Don. This organ was very ill for a while and it was making a horrible humming sound as opposed to a buzzing sound. Usually when a valve instrument or a valve amplifier is making a, a buzzing sound, it means that there's a problem with the ground connections or earthing connections. And if there's a humming sound, it's usually because the capacitors in the power supply unit have failed and they're there to, to smooth out where the, the AC from the mains is converted into DC, there's still what's known as AC ripple. And that is smoothed out by having these large value capacitors inside. When these, these capacitors, electrolytic capacitors that are polarized, uh, plus and minus, when they degrade, they don't work so well as filters. So this AC ripple kind of goes through into the 
circuitry and you get this sort of noise. So that's always a good thing. If you happen to be sort of looking at an organ or, a, or a, even like a valve amp, like a guitar amp, if it's going like buzzing, it's a ground issue. And if it's humming, going, it's a, a ripple filter capacitor issue. To remedy this, I replaced all the capacitors in it. It was still not working 100% as I'd like. So I added a, another capacitor and a, a choke. I do rather a lot of session work on this. We also have other people coming in and using it as well. But it's always available, so if anyone wants any music played on it, just give us a call, or give us an email, or at the very least, like and subscribe. there be sure to check out our other videos we've got all sorts of other videos about other things the next video is going to be the clavioline which is this thing just behind me here next week hopefully we'll be able to take one a tour of this one and give you a few demonstrations of it anyway this is me steve and the c3po saying